This screencast is going to look at multiple regression. This is where we use two or more independent variables to predict the scores in the dependent variable. This screencast will solely focus on how to test the assumptions of regression. If you would like more information on how to actually run and interpret different regression uh, examples, please look at multiple regression too. There are several assumptions that we need to test before running a multiple regression analysis. This screencast will not cover all of them, so if you want more information, you'll need to consult a statistics textbook. The data we are going to use is part of an experiment which aimed to predict tennis serve ball speed in female tennis players. We have variables for the average speed, over five correct trials, the number of years each player has been playing tennis competitively, the results of a maximal isokinetic strength test for shoulder internal rotators, and the results of a hand-eye coordination test. One of the first assumptions we need to think about when running a multiple regression analysis is the ratio of participants to independent variables. This should be at least five participants to one independent variable, Ideally, it should be 20 to 1. In this example, we have 40 participants and three independent variables. As this is only an example, this will not necessarily matter for the analysis. However, when you are planning, collecting and analysing your data, this is something which you need to consider. The other assumptions we will test using analyses. To do this, go to Analyse. And in this menu, choose Regression, and then select Linear. Now, we need to decide which variables are going to go in which part of the analysis box. As we are trying to predict speed, we are going to move this to the dependent box. Next, we are going to select our independent variables and move these to the independent box. Now we want to select statistics. With the regression, you can test the assumptions at the same time as running the analysis. So for this example, we will select both all the boxes required for running the analysis and testing the assumptions. However, in the output, we will only look at how to test the assumptions of regression. The first box you need to tick is under regression coefficients and is confidence intervals. This offers an indication of the predictive ability of the independent variables, so how well the independent variables predict the dependent variable. The R square change button shows the change in the prediction of the dependent variable by adding another block of independent variables. It is only necessary to select the R square change if you are doing hierarchical regression. One of the assumptions of multiple regression is that the independent variables are not highly correlated or perfectly correlated. If they are highly correlated with an R of greater than 0.9, this is known as multicollinearity. If they are perfectly correlated with an R of 1, this is known as singularity. To check for multicollinearity or singularity within our independent variables, we need to select collinearity diagnostics. Finally, we want to select the Durbin Watson and Casewise diagnostics boxes as these will help to identify any outliers within the data. Next, click continue. Next, we want to go to the save box. This will allow us to save any residuals or scores which are created by our analysis into our data file. For these options, we want to save the unstandardized, standardized and adjusted predicted values. This will save to the data file the predicted values for each case of the dependent variable, based on our analysis. We also want to select all three options under the distances box. These help us identify potential outliers within our data. 
the Malhalanobis' distance is a measure of how much the value of a case differs in the independent variables from the average of all other cases, whereby large Malhalanobis' distances signify potential outliers. Cook's distance suggests how much the regression coefficients would change if a particular case was removed. It has been suggested that Cook's distances greater than 1 should be analysed as they may be too influential. Leverage values also measure multivariate outliers with greater values indicating potential outliers. We also want to save several residuals as these can be plotted against the predicted values to give a pictorial representation of our data. A residual is the difference in between the observed value of the variable that we've measured and the value suggested by the regression model. Finally, we want to select the standardised DF betas and the standardised DFIT. The standardised DF betas give us an idea of how much the regression coefficient of each independent variable and the constant would change if a particular case was excluded, while the DFIT shows the change in the predicted value of the dependent variable if a case was omitted. These are shown by creating two new variables within the dataset. Now we can click continue. Next we want to select plots. We can use plots to check the assumption of homoscedasticity. That is the assumption that the variance in our variables is roughly equal. To do this we are going to plot the S resid against the Z predict. So the predicted scores against the residual scores. We are also going to check the box to produce all partial plots, a histogram and normal probability plot. Click continue and then OK to run the analysis. In the output the first box we want to look at is the model summary box as this will give us the results of the Durbin Watson test. As we can see the value for the Durbin Watson test in this example is 1.279. As this is above the cutoff point of 1, we can assume that in this example the residuals are independent. By looking at the collinearity statistics in the coefficients box, we can examine whether we have any multicollinearity, that is, where the variables are very highly correlated. As we can see from the values, none of the independent variables are correlated with an R greater than 0.9. Therefore, we can say that we've met the assumption that the independent variables are not highly correlated. If we look at the collinearity diagnostics, this can help us establish whether our variables are highly correlated or perfectly correlated. If they are, this is violating one of the assumptions and we will have to take corrective measures. Put simply, we want the values for the variance proportions for each variable to be high for one of the dimensions, so for example years of tennis experience the variance proportion is 0.89 on dimension 2 but is very low 0.02 and 0.08 on dimensions 3 and 4. So we want these to be highly loaded on one and not the others and we want to make sure that each independent variable, so years of tennis experience, upper body strength and hand-eye coordination have high values for different dimensions. So in this case, we can be satisfied that we don't have any multicollinearity or singularity. 
The residual statistics box shows us the Malhalanobis' distance, the Cook's distance and the leverage value, all of which can be used to identify outliers in the data. For the Malhalanobis' distance, we want to look at the maximum value, which in this case is 10.83. High scores on the Malhalanobis distance tend to indicate that this is an outlier. However, this is based on the number of independent variables we have as this affects the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are equal to the number of predictors. So in our case, we have three independent variables, therefore our degrees of freedom are three. To check what our critical value for the Malhalanobis distance, we need to consult a chi-squared distribution table which you would find in the appendices of any statistics book. The critical value at the 0 0.05 alpha level, so a 95% confidence interval, is 7.81. So any values in our data which have a Malhalanobis' distance score of greater than 7.81 could be considered as outliers. When we look at the data later on, we can identify any scores which are greater than this value, which we know there are because the maximum score for our Malhalanobis' distance is 10.83. So, and then we can remove these from the data. Cook's distance also gives an indication of any extreme values within the data and it suggested that any values which are greater than 1 should be given scrutiny and perhaps removed. When we look at the Cook's distance again we can see that there is a maximum value of 1.259 which is greater than 1 so we may want to find this data and remove it. Finally, the leverage value can also be used to identify extreme values. A basic calculation used to identify these values is to look for values greater than two times the number of independent variables divided by the number of cases. So in our case, it's two times three, so we have three independent variables, so six, divided by the number of cases, which is 40 which leaves us with a value of 0.15. The maximum score for the leverage value in our data is 0.278. Again, this is above our critical value of 0.15. However, it should be noted that in small samples such as ours, the calculation we use can identify too many cases. So this is something that we need to take into consideration when using the leverage value. This analysis also produces several charts and plots which help us ensure that the data is normally distributed. Some of the plots check for normality, whereas others test the assumption that there is a linear relationship between the dependent and independent variables. As we can see from the normal PP plot, all the residuals cluster around the line suggesting that the assumption of normality has been met. For more information on how to interpret these charts, please see the screencast on preparing questionnaire data. Now that we have checked the assumptions, we now want to go to the data and remove any values which have been identified as outliers. To do this, we're going to go to Data and choose Select Cases. Here, we want to select If Condition is Satisfied and then click on If as this allows us to create the condition that we want to select data by. In our example, we want to select the data which doesn't
doesn't have high values on the Malhalanovus distance and the Cook's distance. First, I'm going to select Malhalanovus distance, so MAH underscore 1, and move this into the expression box. Next, I need to specify what value we are going to classify as an extreme value in our data. So, from the previous example, we know that any value which is above 7.81, our critical Malhalanovus distance value, is going to be classed as an outlier. So I want to select that Malhalanobis distances are going to be less than 7.81. So I type this into the box. By simply using this expression, any cases which have a Malhalanobis distance of greater than 7.81 would be removed from further analyses. However, we mentioned earlier that there is also the Cook's distance to identify extreme data. Therefore, I want to create an expression which includes both the Malhalanobis distances and the Cook's distance. To do this, I select the AND sign. Next, I select the Cook's distance, so COO underscore 1, and move this into the expression box. And as mentioned previously, it is suggested that Cook's values of greater than 1 may be too influential within our data. Therefore, I want to include in the expression that we want the values to be less than 1. By clicking Continue, all data which has a Malhalanobis distance of greater than 7.81 and a Cook's distance of greater than 1 will now be removed from future analyses. Next, click OK to apply this rule to the data. Having scrolled down, I can see that case number 26 now has a line drawn through it, showing that this will not be included in future analyses. I can also see that the Mahalanobis distance for this case is greater than 7.81. The value is 10.83. Furthermore, I can see that the Cook's value for this individual is 1.26, which is greater than the suggested value of 1. Removing this individual from the main analyses helps us ensure that we have met the assumptions of regression. That concludes the screencast for how to test the assumptions for multiple regression. We have looked at what the assumptions are and how we can test these, and also how to remove out-of-range data from the file. For more information on regression, such as how to run regression analyses, please consult Multiple Regression 2.